Hey there friends, how's it going? And welcome to my tutorial for the Niagara UI render plugin for Unreal Engine. In this first part, we will go through a really simple UI particle setup. I'll be working in Unreal Engine 5, but the same steps should apply in Unreal Engine 4. So feel free to follow along. What we currently have in the project is this simple menu. And when we press play, there is this kind of okayish looking dissolve effect. It's nothing great, so let's make it more exciting and a bit more alive with particles. Let's start by creating a new particle system. In my particles folder, I will right click, go into effects and create a new Niagara system. We can just create a new system from selected emitters and I will choose a simple sprite burst. It doesn't really matter which one you'll choose, it's basically just a different starting point from which we'll go. So you will either have to add more stuff or remove some stuff. But other than that, it should be the same. So let's add it as an emitter. And let's call our system like Niagara system button press. Sounds good to me. So when we open it, we can see our only single particle getting alive and afterwards dying. How unfortunate. So let's make something about it. First of all, we can notice that it's always at the same position. It's always at zero, zero, zero. But we want our particles to spawn in a box, in the whole button, right? So in the particle spawn, let's add a new module and we will add box location. So instead of spawning at single point at zero, 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 it will spawn in a box. So now we can see that the particle is spawning at random positions in this box, right? Let's add like 100 particles instead of one so we can really see what's happening here. They are spawning in our box, which is currently meter by meter by meter. But uh, we want it to spawn inside of our button, so let's open our button and let's see how big it really is. If we look at the size box, we can see that it's 320 pixels wide and 75 pixels tall, right? So let's put it here. X will be X, but height won't be in Y, but in Z. Y is the depth. So if you imagine it goes into your screen, we don't really care about it right now. So we'll, we'll just, yeah, leave it to zero. We don't care about you that. And uh, the height will be 75 pixels. This is how our, kind of our, our button looks, I guess. Uh, but these particles are way too big for my liking. So let's go into the initialize particle module. And in the sprite size mode, let's set it to random uniform. So the X and Y dimensions will be the same, but it will be always randomized per particle. Let's do something like maybe four to eight. And now I feel like there's not enough particles. So let's crank it up, maybe like a thousand. Yeah, that looks way better. Uh, this doesn't look amazing or anything, but let's just try it out if it works in our uh, UI widget, right? Because currently we don't even have that working. Let's go into our button. And in the palette, let's find a Niagara category. In there, there is a Niagara system widget. So let's uh, drag that into our canvas panel. And let's make it fill the entire space of the button. It uh, doesn't really care how big the area is. Uh, it doesn't send any information about the size or uh, the width or the height to the particles. It only cares about where the center of this box is. So this always makes it centered in the button. We could also do it like this, basically. So we will put it into the middle and say you will be 0 0.5 or 0 0.5 in alignment. So it will be still centered. And this will give you the exact same result as if you just do it this way. So the only thing the widget cares about is the center position of this green box you see. 
Uh, okay, let's uh, pick our uh, button press Niagara system we've made. And well, we still cannot see this, but don't worry. We get at least this warning here. It says the material domain is incorrect on the default sprite material. So what does it mean? If we look in our Niagara system, and if we go into our sprite renderer, we can see that it's using the default sprite material. This is just a material that Unreal Engine already comes with, which is used to render default particles. It's cool, I guess, and okay, but the, what the issue is for us is the material domain is set to surface. That means that it can be rendered in the world, but not in UI. For that, we will need the material domain to be set as user interface. Of course, we could change it here, but that would break all your other uh, particles in the world, which we obviously don't want. So let's just, for now, replace this with our own material. I already created a basic particle material for that, so let's put it here. Basic, but this one also doesn't render, because this one is still a surface material domain. Because it has to be surface for us to see it here in the preview. So I hear you ask, how do we fix that? It's very simple. If we go here into our widget, we can see that there is a material remap list. We can also automatically populate it, and if we press this button, we can see that it automatically find out that it's using the basic material. So this is the material that the particle system is, is using in the world. And we can specify a second material right here that it will use to render this material for the UI. So it will like swap the material when it's rendering it for the UI. We have two ways of creating this material. We can either go and create it manually as we created the first material, which is kind of, you know, a lot of work, especially since we already created one material for the particles, or our plugin can attempt to recreate this material for us. So let's try that. I will just plug my content browser so we won't lose it. And I will right click on the basic uh, particle material, and there is an option to create Niagara UI material. Let's click on that. It automatically creates a new material, and if we open it up, we can see that some things are a bit different to the original material. First of all, the material domain is set to user interface, which means it's already able to uh, render as UI material. The other thing is, that the particle color is replaced with vertex color node. This is necessary to render the particles or to get the particle color in the UI. So even if you're creating uh, this material manually, you need to uh, set the material domain to be user interface and replace all your particle colors with the vertex color. There is one limitation with the vertex color is that it goes only from zero to one. You cannot have vertex color that like 1.5 or 10 or whatever. Uh, it's only from 0 to 255 in integers, right? So in floats from 0 to 1. When you're replacing these nodes, uh, there are other bunch of nodes you need to replace. And if you want to a detailed list of all of them, you can go to Unreal Forums or to the documentation for this plugin, and you will find what you need to do for every single node. There are unfortunately some nodes that I just cannot replace and there are some limitations for that, so be aware. Also, when you're creating the material automatically, I would recommend always to check out if it uh, converted properly. There is some change that something screwed up and your material isn't as it's supposed to be. So this is just take this as a good starting point to create your UI materials. Okay, but now enough of talking, let's finally see our particles, right? So uh, here, let's specify the new created basic UI material, and we can see our particles, finally. 
they're in wrong location, which seems like, you know, a programming bug, but I will have to fix that. <clears throat> but if you press compile, they will spawn finally their cor correct location. Okay, uh, we are rendering something, so let's make this particle a little bit nicer. First of all, uh, they're all standing still. I want them to like burst from the center outwards, right? So let's add velocity from point at the beginning. And this kind of looks a bit better, right? But I promised you a cool looking curly thing, right? Something like Thanos snaps, you know, when all those particles went into the air and started curling and disappearing. That was really cool. Let's try to do that. So in particle update, let's add curl noise force. Of course, we need to add it before solve forces and velocity. And let's increase it to like 500. Okay, but now the noise is like too frequent. It's uh, Let's try making this like 15, maybe 20. Yeah, that's better. But uh, it still doesn't follow like those nice curly patterns. So let's add some drag to it. Again, we need to add it before solve forces and velocities. And let's do... That's too much. Maybe three. Okay, I like this effect. It's starting to look good. Uh, in initialized particle, what I will change is they're all now kind of dying at the same time. Let's make it more random from like 0 0.5 to 2 seconds. Okay, that's a bit nicer. And let's also change the color. I think uh, when I was creating the button, I used something like 230 for hue and like 0 0.8 for saturation. Yeah, I think that's it. So now it looks a tiny bit better. One more thing I would like to change is currently all our, all our particles are perfect circles. I would want them to like squash and stretch when they uh, as they're flying based on their velocity. Uh, so let's add the scale uh, sprite size by speed node. And let's them, if they go really fast, let's keep their width as there it is. And let's uh, make them a lot longer. Okay. So now you can see they're kind of stretched, but it's always just up and down. It doesn't follow their velocity in the world. And that's what we want. So if we go into sprite render, we can change their alignment from unaligned to velocity aligned which means they will rotate towards velocity and we will get this really cool looking effect. Okay, I like that. Maybe even a bit more. Okay, that's starting to look like something, but I don't like how it's just one solid color. I would like them to glow in my UI. Normally with the particles, you could just use emissive and just boost up the value of the color and the post-processing, uh, the bloom would take care of glow, right? But in UI, you don't have any post-processing, you don't have any bloom that will add on top and create those nice glowy effects, right? We have to somehow read ourselves. So we will just fake it. For that, let's just duplicate our basic UI material and create one that we'll call glow. Over here, uh, we will just create some space. And if you really think about how glow looks, is that basically the more towards middle we go, the less saturated the color gets and it's more white, right? And the more towards edges we go, it gets less white and more saturate the more color it, right? So let's try to fake that effect. We will, yeah, we can use the same uh, radial gradient we already have. And we will pump that into the LERP node. Basically what LERP node does is it blends between uh, thing in A and thing in B based on some alpha. So if alpha is zero, it will be fully A. If it's alpha one, it will be fully B and like 0 0.5 will be exactly 50-50 mix, right? So, uh, 
uh, into A, we will plug the straight uh, particle color or vertex color in this case, right? But this is particle color. Uh, and in B, we want the less saturated, more white color, right? So we can just multiply this by something like maybe five. Let's try that. Okay, nothing much changes here in preview because the vertex color is white by default. So let's just add a uh, color, right? So just hold free on your keyboard and click for LERP. I don't know if I mentioned it, just hold L and click. And you will get LERP. And uh, let's pick some like red color, okay? And use that as our input. So we can see, especially if I unplug the uh, mask, that the more towards middle we go, the less saturated and brighter we get, right? If I crank this to like something like 10, it will be even more visible. Uh, by the way, if I'm creating glows, I really like when I uh, invert this uh, density on the radial gradient. So I will just go from invert density and I will just create a static bool for that and set it to true. So the glow will look like this. Uh, okay, let me plug the opacity back. This looks okay, but mm, maybe this uh, radial gradient is too large for the glow. So let's just duplicate this. We don't need that. And uh, instead of the default radius, which is 0 0.5, we can just do something like 0 0.3. So we will get uh, a bit smaller gradient. And we will use this as an input to our warp. And yeah, I like that a lot more. This looks a lot more glowy to me. So let's apply that and save that. And we will use this material for the button. So glow. Okay. But also I forgot obviously to uh, plug the color back into the vertex color. So it was using that orange. But now we should get this really cool looking glowy particles. Okay. I like that. But the... Uh, there is a problem. They always activate when I press compile. We don't want them to activate automatically. We want them to activate after the user presses the button. So let's go into the Niagara system widget and let's untick auto activate. This will, of course, cause them to not activate when I press compile. And let's activate them manually. Also, there is uh, there are more options like tick one pause, to which you can check if you if you pause the game and then show the menu, and you want the particles to be active. Otherwise, they won't be they will be frozen with the rest of the game. Uh, so first, let's rename this widget to like uh, Niagara System Button Press. Okay, uh, maybe widget after that. Okay. And let's go into our graph. Over here, I have a node that uh, already fires when we press the button and I hook the normal animation into there. So after that, we want to toggle our particle system. So let's drag our widget into here. So you can e uh, either hold control and just drag it from here, or you can just drag it without control and then click get, or you can right click and type get, uh, and as button press which it's up to you and from here we just want to say activate system and if we did everything correctly we should be able now to go into the game hit play and just press the button yeah. and just press the button yeah okay uh, so, obviously, this doesn't work. So, what's wrong? Hmm. Oh, I see. So, if you look uh, at our uh, widget, it's on top of the button. And the green area is the space it takes as a widget, right? So, when we click on the screen, Unreal things we are clicking on the Niagara widget instead of the actual button, so it doesn't detect that. Uh, it's caused because the visibility is by default set to visible instead of uh, non-hit testable, which I probably should do by default. And I will 
hopefully fix in the next uh, plugin version. So let's change that manually and let's also put it underneath the actual button. So the effect will look nicer. So now if we go here and we press play, we should get this really cool looking effect. Oh yeah, I'm really happy with this. This looks so cool, at least to me guys. Look, I'm a programmer, I'm not the graphics designer. So if you don't like this, like uh, whatever, I don't care. <laughs> I like this and that's what matters. Uh, okay, so we're basically done with this and it should work even on other buttons, right? Because we implemented it in one class. So let's go into our menu and let me just drag a bunch of other buttons in there. So like here one, I'll put the other one here. And oh, I know one thing that currently won't work is if we change the size of this button it won't take it into account uh, because we've hard coded the uh, box size right here in the box location. So no matter what the size of the button will be, this will be always 320 pixels uh, with and 75 pixels tall, right? Because as I said, this thing that we say to fill the whole thing doesn't mean anything for the particle system. It only cares only about the center. So even if I press play now, we can see that the effect is only in the middle. Uh, we can fix that, but that's a bit more advanced than what I wanted to do in this video, but whatever guys, let's do this. The beginner part of this video ends here. So if you're satisfied with this and you want to tweak things manually, you can just leave and go watch anything else you want to, but I'm going to do a bit more advanced part and we're going to actually fix this. Hopefully if I'll manage to do that. So let's try that. Let's add a new vector user exposed variable into Niagara and let's call that something like button size. I cannot see what I'm writing. Oh no. Button size. Did I manage to write it correctly? I didn't. Ah. Okay, here we go. And here in the box location, instead of typing the values straight here manually, we can just say it, you will, we can just tell it, you will use button size instead. So we can see our particle system change. Now it again emits from a single point. That's because by default, this vector is zero, zero, zero. So let's change the default. Let's go into user parameters in Niagara and let's type the values back here. So the default preview will be correct. Now, when we create each button, we want to set this variable from blueprints. So let's do that. And let's go into our button blueprint. And over here, I already set the size box uh, width and height on pre-construct. So together with it, we can uh, set a parameter in the Niagara UI. Okay, let's drag our widget here again. And this time we will get to uh, need to get the actual component. So let's get the Niagara component and let's uh, set uh, a Niagara vector variable. Uh, the, var the variable name will be the thing we set in Niagara. So it will be the button size. And uh, we want to set our button size to that. So we could either make a vector like this, but actually in Unreal, you can right click on a pin and click split structure pin to get a XYZ float pins instead of the struct pin there. And now we can just connect X to X and Y to Z exactly how it's meant to be. And that should theoretically fix our issue. Oh yeah. So yeah, guys, this will be really it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and maybe learned something. Next time we will take a look on how to create a mouse trail particle. And apart after that, we will create a system that will, after you collect these coins, it will, they will bounce around the screen and 
there will be like this cool animation and one day you will come to this top left corner you will collect them and a bunch of stuff like that i don't really know yet but uh, once again thanks guys for watching and have a nice day bye bye